Hello everyone, my name is Faris, I'm here today to share with you a story. So, four years ago I came to Beirut to study at AUB, and one of the fundamental changes I felt was the vegetables I eat every day actually. You see, when I, well, I, I used to live in a village, and when I tra uh, transferred to an urban context, uh, my diet really changed and I started suspecting the cleanliness of my vegetables. So here, I, uh, we thought to ourselves, actually, why can't we grow our own vegetables at home? Well, what could be so difficult about it? Well, actually, there are many difficulties with it, uh, such as I don't have the expertise, or I'm an engineering student, I don't, I don't have the time for it, or there's a limited space at home, but we might just uh, tackle these problems. So we did some market research on the matter, and we saw that there are over 79% of people who are interested in farming from a sample of 149 uh, people. And yes, the space availability is a challenge, but maybe that's one of our project requirements. There are, uh, in the market out there, there are some solutions such as click and grow. However, from uh, seeing them, that they are actually small and inexpensive. You wouldn't grow something significant with it. Plug and plant got cancelled because of lack of funding, and there's a regular home planting and soccer player, which is bulky and needs support, and the other needs to make the journey, which is quite difficult. So, uh, partnering in this hackathon, brainstorming and debating, well, we came up with this solution. Why don't we come up with an automated, easy to use system for home food growing, which just might tackle the previously mentioned problems? And here, after some dirty work in the workshops and some clean work on the computers, we came up with this prototype. This prototype, which, is, which is, looks like vertical planting, it has multiple system components, such as the reservoir, the base, artificial plants, and here on the right you can see the actual prototype built. And the main features of the system is that it can be both indoor and outdoors, it has variable sizes, uh, so it could uh, just fit in the decor. It's completely automated, watering once, uh, once in period, according to the plant functionality, it's plant adjusted, and there's an, a very good application support that could give you surveillance over this plant, and at the same time, it could uh, give you the right to override some of the functionalities of the sensors and the responses of the system. So now we will uh, see the app demo with uh, uh, when the user opens up the app, they see how much water there is in the tank and uh, a list of all of the plants they have in their garden. Upon clicking one of the plants, you see some stats about it as in its status, its age, and you can also choose to configure the settings or check the guide. Uh, to when you configure the settings, you can either remove the default setting and change it as you like or keep the default. Uh, going back, you can go to the guide and in the guide, you can see a few things about the plant. You can see how long it would uh, live on average and how much it would yield, the watering schedule and other suggested um, actions you can take. Uh, you can also add a new plant and you can do that by searching for them or and uh, you can see the information about it and click the plus to add it. Uh, you can also go to the plant directory which, and in the plant directory you will see a list of all the plants that you can plant at home and upon clicking one of these, you can also see the information about it. Thank you, Alain, now for the hardware demo. Okay, so basically we have the uh, Arduino and the uh, driver at the top level, separated from the water. And uh, we have a water sensor that uh, buzzes if the water is low. Uh, on the uh, bottom level, we have a uh, moisture sensor that activates the solenoid valves and that's the water flow from the tank to the plant. On the mid level we show the uh, vertical planting flexibility and the design. And uh, we also have a light sensor that uh, modifies the brightness by activating artificial lighting. Also the moisture of the ground is sensed but we have a humidity sensor for the water so for the uh, Soil surface uh, is being sent, sensed as well, and this one activates the fan and controls the speed accordingly. And all the data is sent to the app via Thank you. That's your path. I know you don't want to go back home. Of course, the size of
the, the prototype was only a sample, it can, can, can be a many sizes. So our business model is very simple. Of course, we make revenues from unit sales, and then perhaps from sales of actual plants if needed, and maintenance contracts. The cost of this prototype reached up to $98 from the mechanical and electronic parts. However, we believe through estimations that applying economies of scale and some value engineering, including the variable costs, we can go down to $49.99. And in the next step, we're looking forward to build a full functioning prototype, apply for a hard accelerator program to better build our prototype, recruit more needed people, and go for research and development to make the system more reliable and smarter. Saying this, this is our team. We are a group of three electrical engineers, two mechanical engineers, and one computer science student. Hassan uh, Awilad, Shirin, Zatari, Ala, Hariri, me, Muhammad Faris, Jazri. Muhammad Hassani sitting and Bilal Ghadir. Thank you very much. I'll have your questions now. Does it, does it have to be this exact shape? Or are you thinking of it as a unit that you retrofit to any plant or any garden? So if you have a planting place at home, would the system simply be a tank that I just can hang there, plug the sensors, and it becomes automated? Or I have to buy this chassis. Okay, let's. Uh, oh, yeah, answer this. Okay. okay, so let's say you're a customer and you want to buy the system. The basic system is the automated system that you don't have to do anything with it, and one layer which comes in many different sizes according to your home decor. So we would have a decor engineer that would see where you would quite fit your plant, and we would design uh, the content the whole uh, accordingly. And then you can add additional layers, either vertically or horizontally. So size doesn't matter, it's only a prototype. It's according to your, uh, it's, it's customer uh, customized. This is, this is the prototype for the uh, Hadoop system. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about plants. Do you have any agricultural majors among you who can talk about plants? No, but uh, mm -hmm. I'll add research. I so who's going to uh, populate the information according to the plan that you have? Oh, there's actually a database that we have found that has uh, a lot of information about the different plants. Okay. So actually, uh, while doing our research, we actually discovered a, a database which is open source about uh, different information for growing different types of plants usually found at home. And what we actually were planning in the future part, we said we are going to recruit some uh, different majors, and one of them was actually agriculture and engineering. So we predicted, like, we need that at, at, at the long run. Okay, so vertical farming is a very exciting field. It's growing, I recommend to look into things. We haven't found them on hydroponics, aeroponics, and all of these things. And there's more than one way to do it. The difficulty is not actually the hardware uh, and the software, all these things. You guys are smart, and I'm sure you can build them up. The, the two difficulties are being able to consistently able to produce plants, keeping in mind that this is not an enclosed system like any hydroponic system. So the environment that the customer has around him might affect and completely ruin the plant. Too much sunlight, too little sunlight, and so on. And two are the unit the economics of the business. And the, the, the produce that comes out is enough to justify people buying these things. So it is a complex problem, but it's a very exciting and growing trend. And I highly recommend you guys research it and look into it would be very suitable for a country like Lebanon where it's a small surface area, a lot of sunlight, so it's uh, feasible and nobody has yet cracked it. There's more than one company working on it and I highly recommend you guys push for it. And thank you. Last question. <laughs> so, uh, to, to continue with what you were saying, what do you expect as produce, for example, if you take an average, uh, an average system that a customer would buy to his house and he wants to plant strawberries, how much should he, should he expect in terms of uh, as was mentioned in the app, it will tell you the, uh, the different specifications of each plant and it will help you actually estimate the, uh, the end result of your product. And also I think I spoke to someone who knew about the subject, about what you can plant and what you can't plant. Yeah, um, there are many, many things that you can plant. I don't know the exact numbers yet, but like I know that the beans are possible, most leafy greens like lettuce and um, uh, parsley and many, many other things can be planted within it. And depending on the size of the container, uh, the yield will differ. So. Any uh, value for like. Uh, well, I, I looked at strawberries, and okay. I know that strawberries in a year, like one 
plant of strawberry can yield up to 1.13 kilograms of strawberry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And I would like also to highlight that it was a good teamwork in terms of hardware software presentation, so all the three were uh, quite advanced. Thank you. Thank you guys.